Hello again, Dr. Wright here. I want to show you how you can create a yield curve in Excel. Uh, not just a static yield curve though, our objective is to create a yield curve such that we can type in any date for which we have historical data and the yield curve will automatically update. So that Excel spreadsheet begins with obtaining data from the Federal Reserve and so you can see I have the federalreserve.gov web page opened up. I'm going to go to economic research and data and once that pulls up I'm going to scroll down and you can see right here that we have the data download program so I'm going to go there and what we're looking for are interest rates if we want to create a yield curve we want the interest rates on treasuries so I'm going to click on the interest rates and you'll notice that they already have a pre-formatted data package that includes treasuries it's exactly what we want so we're going to go straight to that pre-formatted package and we're just going to download it Notice, however, that this is a comma-separated file. So right away when you pull it up, the first thing you should do is resave it as an Excel file. And so I have a place on my computer where I want to save this, and so I'm going to go there. Obviously, you can save it wherever you want. So let me find my folder here. And I'm just going to name it Yield Curve. But the, again, the trick is you've got to make sure it's an Excel workbook. You don't want it to be a comma-separated file. Ah, and I did not do it. All right, I forgot to change it. So let me turn into an Excel workbook, hit the Save button. Okay, so now I've saved it as an Excel workbook, and now I just want to clean it up a little bit for our purposes. Uh, what you can see if you look up here, this is a one month, the next column are three month, then six month, and then one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year, 10 year, 20 year, 30 year. So I'm gonna relabel those just so it's a little bit easier for us to see. So that's one month, that's three month, that's six month, that's one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year, 10 year, 20 year and 30 year treasuries and we don't need all of that right there and I'm gonna relabel this just date okay so this is the data that we're gonna work with uh, feel free to touch up the formatting a little bit if you want but what I want to do is I'm gonna push this all down because I want our yield curve to actually appear at the top of the screen so I'm just gonna give us a bunch of new rows here so that we have a lot of space push that all the way down and what I'm going to do is we're going to have an input variable and our input variable why don't we do this input variable is going to be our date and I'm just doing a little bit of formatting here uh, nothing really spectacular so that's why I'm not taking a lot of time to explain it so what's going to happen is we're going to put a date in right here as our input variable and so maybe we'll put in 12 15 uh, 2005 and then what we're going to do is we want to actually go get the yield curve data for that so we're going to need to know the term or the time to maturity and then we're going to want to know what the yield was on all those different yield, uh, times to maturity so I'm going to we're going to have to make some changes here so I'm just going to put some starting data in so to start uh, we know that this is going to be a 30 day 90 day 180 day and then this is going to be one year two year three year five year seven ten twenty thirty okay so we're gonna put a date in here and then this is going to spit out what the yield was to all of these different types of treasuries on that date so let's put output variables right here and give it just a little bit of formatting uh, it, it look the formatting's up to you I don't it doesn't bother me how you, how you format it so just trying to clean it up a little bit okay now one of the great tricks in this Excel file is we want to create what's called a dynamic data range and this is what I mean right now we have data going through February 6th of 2012 but with each day that goes by we can get new data we can update this data what I want to be able to do is just just literally dump in more days worth of data and not have to do anything else to my spreadsheet have everything update for me automatically and so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna actually define a range and there is a trick involved here so go to formulas 
and go to define a name and give it whatever name you want. I'm just going to call it yield. Okay, and then this is where the trick comes in. How are we going to tell it what data in our minds represents this yield? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the offset function. So you have to hit equals offset. And there are several variables you have to put into the offset function. The first variable is you have to tell it what is the upper leftmost cell in your data set. For us, it's right there, A35. That is the upper leftmost data in our entire data set. Put a comma, the next variable tells Excel, well, how many rows should I go down from there when I start? Well, when we start, we don't want it to go down anywhere. We want to always start in A35, so we don't want it to go down or up at all. The next variable is how many columns to the right or left should Excel go when it starts. Again, when we start, we don't want it to go anywhere. We want it to always go to A35, so another zero. The next variable says, okay, Excel is starting in A35. Now it's asking us, okay, in terms of the end of your data set, how many rows down should I go? To figure that out, what we're going to do is we're going to do count A, and we're going to click on this entire column. So what Excel is going to do is it's going to say, all right, I'm going to start in cell A35, and now it's saying, how many rows down will I go from there? Well, it's just going to count up how many rows have content in this entire column, and it's going to go down that far. Well, that will be problematic for us because there are one, two, three, four, five rows that have content that really aren't a part of our data set. So we need to subtract out five from that. Okay, so again, Excel is going to count up all of the rows that have content in this column, and that's how far down it's going to go. But since there are five rows with content that are not a part of our data set, actually strike that. There are six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So since there are six rows that have uh, content that we don't want to be a part of our data set, we have to subtract out six. Now Excel is asking us, okay, I'm going to start in A35, but how many columns to the right do you want me to go? We're going to use again the count A function, and we're just going to click on this row right here. So what Excel is going to do is it's going to count how many rows, or I'm sorry, how many columns have content in this row, and that's how many columns out it will take our data set. I've closed all the parentheses. I'm going to hit OK, and let me just demonstrate to you what our data set is now. So we've named it Yield. I'm going to come into the Name Manager. I'm just going to view it, and I just want you to see what our data set is. And you can see that our data set is starting in A35, and it's going all the way out to the 30 year, and it's going all the way down to the end of our data set. The beauty of constructing your data this way is that if you put more data into it, that will automatically get included in Excel. Very handy. Okay, so now the next thing that we need to do is actually start grabbing the data that we want. Uh, and again, we're going to have to come in and doctor some of these formulas. So we'll start, and then I'll show you the problems, and I'll show you how to fix them. So we want the yield on a 30-day T-bill for December 15th, 2005. I'm going to use the VLOOKUP function, and what I want to look up is that date, and I want to look it up in the data set that we defined as yield. So we just have to put yield. We have to tell it which column we want then. Well, we want the second column, so to get that, I'm actually going to use this column function and just click right there on B34. Okay, And then we have to tell it true or false. This is just Excel asking us, well, what if I can't find that date? I'm going to put in true, which means if you can't find that date, grab the closest. Just grab the closest date you can find. So you can see that on December 15, 2005, the yield on a 30-day T-bill was 3.6%. I'm going to lock in this A28, and we should be able to drag that across. Okay, now... Um, at this point, I'm going to start creating the chart. Once we create the chart, you're going to see problems, and we'll fix the problems. Uh, I can tell you right now, that will be a problem for us. But let's go ahead and put the chart in. I'm going to use a scatter plot, and I'm going to have a scatter plot where the dots are connected. 
Uh, I'm going to just drag it up here. And make it as big as I possibly can. Didn't want to do that. Just want to make it big. So go like so. Uh, delete pretty much everything that's in here right now. We're going to make it our own thing. Yield curve. And we're going to select data. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to add my own. And if you want, that's fine. You can just call it yield curve. So on the x axis, I'm going to want time to maturity. That's a problem. We're going to have to fix it. I'll show you what the problem is. You may have already spotted it. And on the y axis, we want the actual yield. So I'm just highlighting our data right here. Okay. Clicking OK and clicking OK again. And what you can see is it's a very ugly, problematic chart. Let me try to discuss what some of the problems are. First problem is we have a 30 here and a 30 here, but those are obviously very different. That's 30 days. That's 30 years. So we need to make these all the same scale. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to turn that into 30 days divided by 360, which turns it into a fraction of the year, right? So 90 divided by 360 and right here 180. divided by 360. Okay, so that starts to make it a little better for us, but notice now we've got this ugly data point right there. It's the yield on the 30-year treasury. There's no data for it. And you can see that we've, we're going to have some other problems here. Look at January 2nd, 1962. There is no data for one month, three month, six month, two year, seven year, and 20 and 30 years. So if you put that data in, you're going to get a really messy chart. Because where there's no data, Excel just puts a data point on there at zero. Right, so there's a way to fix this. What we're going to do this is we're going to nest these yields inside an if-then statement. And let me show you the beauty of what you can do in Excel. If there's no data, for instance, that cell is blank. It's spitting out a zero right here using the VLOOKUP. Well, if there's no data, if you will replace that with this error message, it will actually take it off of the chart. So what we want to do is we want to make it so that if there's a blank cell or if it says no data, then we want to actually output right here that error message, which will then pull it off of our chart. So let's put these inside of an if-then statement. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to use the or function. Okay, so here's two criteria. If the VLOOKUP equals no data, and now here's the other one, the other logic, since we're using the OR function, or if the VLOOKUP, so now I'm using the exact same VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP if that equals nothing, if, if either of those are true, so there's our OR function, then I actually want this error message to get spit out. If that's not the case, though, if neither of those conditions are true, then I actually want the outcome of the VLOOKUP, and so I'm going to repeat the VLOOKUP. So you can see what happened with that if-then statement is since there's no data in this cell, it's now spitting out this error message. Well, we should be able to drag that across. If not, we'll figure out what mistake we made. But you can see now things have changed drastically for us. If it's a blank cell, it's spitting out the error message, and it's now pulling it off the chart. So the only thing we're seeing on the chart is the one year, three year, five year, and 10 year. Now we've got one other problem. You can see that the axis on the chart stayed static. It didn't change, so it's still taking it out 35 years. If you're okay with that, that's fine. You don't need to change it. But if, if, the, if you were uncomfortable with that, if you wanted to make it so that, well, hey, there's no data at the 20 and 30 year mark. Let's just take it out 10 years. What you could do is you could put all of these inside of an if-then statement such that you would only see a term or time to maturity if there was actually a yield. So let me just give you an example. Right here you could say if that equals the error message, right? 
then give me that error message again. Otherwise, go ahead and give me the time to maturity. So you could do something like that, and you could do it for all of them, and it wouldn't really take that long, so we'll just do it real quickly here. So again, if that equals this error message, then give me the error message. Otherwise, give me the time to maturity. And I'm going to do this as quickly as I can, so that would be 180. And I'm just going to do this now to make it as fast as I can. So that would actually be one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year, ten year, twenty year, and 30 year. And so having done that, now you can see that the chart is nice and dynamic for us. It's only going out 12 years on the chart since the max date that we're using is 10 years out. Should be able to put in uh, any date that you want to. So let's say 12, 5, 2004. And now you can see we have data for everything here except for the 30 year. Uh, let's put in a couple other dates and see what we get. Let's do 12, 15, 2011. And you can see now we have data for all of it. So you're starting to get a very dynamic spreadsheet here. I'm just going to do a little bit of formatting here to make it look a little bit more readable. So on the input variables, I'm just going to outline that. I'm going to give it a smidge of color, uh, nothing too dramatic. So I might do something like that on the input variables. Uh, on the output variables, I might do something like this. I might just center it across. I might outline it. I might give it, again, a smidge of color, nothing dramatic. Just some boxing here to make it more readable. Same thing down here would probably box all of that in. And then from this point, actually, I might do some conditional formatting. So any data that I get from this point forward, just going to conditional format it with a new rule, which says format only cells that contain no blanks. And for cells that contain no blanks, why don't you just give me a border around it? Simple stuff. And I'm probably going to change this yield curve to make it pop just a little bit in terms of how it appears. And so I'm going to double click on this. And maybe I'll come up here and I'll pick something like uh, this right here. I'm going to give it the pitch black background, though. I like the pitch, pitch, pitch black background right there. I want the red to pop a little bit more. So on the line color, I'm going to pick a red that's a little bit uh, more neon. And then on the markers, on the marker fill, uh, I might go ahead and go with the solid fill of maybe white. And on the marker line, I might also give that a white, like so. Looks something like that. OK, so now what you have is you have a yield curve that literally you can type in any date that you want right here. And it's going to show you the yield curve on that date. You may want to make the axes lab labels just a little bit bigger so people can see them. like so, but literally should be able to type in any date going as far back as February, uh, January 2nd, 1962, and it's going to look like that, and as recently as February 6th, 2012, looking like that, and everything in between. So that's how you can make a yield curve, uh, some very useful tools there, especially the ability to create a dynamic data table so that when you put more data into it, it will automatically update. And as I get more data in the next couple days here, I'll create a supplementary video showing you how that can actually work. But that's it for now.